So one of the major criticisms of the Keychron Q1 was the sound. Because the keyboard was so hollow, it resulted in a lot of audible ping, and it didn't really sound good as a keyboard. And in my initial review, I didn't cover the full solution to the ping, but in this video, I'm going to show you that the fix is pretty simple and it'll cost you probably less than $10. Thankfully, Keychron has listened to the reviews and have added an extra piece of case foam for the retail release of the keyboard to help with the hollowness, and that's a great job by Keychron. So my initial impressions of the Q1 sound was that it was really, really pingy. So it was really bad, almost as bad as the Razer Huntsman Mini, which means you could probably hear the ping from across the room. But let's keep in mind, this is Keychron's first venture into the custom mechanical keyboard market. And when designing something new like this, there's something bound to go wrong. And it just so happened to be the sound. So the first thing I tried to do was to add more gasket foam. So on the Q1, it already comes with eight pieces of foam on the corners but it also comes with eight extra strips to put on. So I put it on the sides and I put it in the middle where there were empty spots. But unfortunately, that did not help. So I decided to pull out the big guns and these are the KVD Fans Gasket Foams and they are way denser and way more high quality than the Q1 foams. And I put this on the top and the bottom case where it would line up with the foams on the plate. Obviously, it made the keyboard a little stiffer because there's less room to flex and it also did not help with the ping noise because it still didn't solve the issue of the hollowness of the keyboard. So to really fix the ping issue, you really only have two options. The first one is to completely get rid of all the flex in the keyboard to get a really solid typing experience. And solid as in a very harsh bottom out as if you're typing on a tray mount keyboard. Or number two, you can retain the flex and still get a pretty clean typing experience, which I think is definitely ideal considering you paid for a gasket mount keyboard and flex is definitely a significant part to the gasket mount keyboard experience. So for the first method, you will need to put gasket foam everywhere. This means filling up the empty spots on the plates and the top and bottom case with the Q1 and KVD fans foam. Next, you want to add a thick piece of foam on the bottom, maybe around half the width of a finger, and stick it below the PCB. This will make the keyboard feel super hard without the possibility of any flex. With the second method, you will need to layer some tape on the bottom of the PCB. This will make the keyboard sound less hollow because the sound bounces off the tape as well as being absorbed by it. You also want to put some polyfill or some cotton balls at the base of the keyboard to fill all the space. The cotton is dense yet soft enough that when you press down on the keyboard, you're still getting a little bit of flex. So let's hear the before and after sound test and see how you like the difference. Just an FYI, both these methods will still result in a tiny bit of ping when typing because the hollowness issue is not completely resolved, but it's way better than when it was stuck. And although there's still a little bit of ping, it doesn't stop you from adding a couple more layers of tape on the bottom of the PCB or just adding some denser foam to help with the reverberance so that you don't hear the ping 99% of the time you're using it. Let me know in the comments down below which one you thought sounded better. And guess what? We got another gas mount keyboard from Melgeek and we're going to see how this one sounds in a future video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Peace.